Now in this tutorial, we want to add some text to our page. Now when we're developing it, you may not have all the information and therefore we have to use what is called placeholder text. And if you don't have the images, you can always put in placeholder images. But this tutorial is going to be focused on placeholder text. So in my main body, I would like to have some text in here. And one of the websites I like to use is a gibberish text generator. Now the site I like to use is called randomtext.me. And in here you can use the traditional lorem ipsum. And we can also use lorem ipsum from Emmet. Or my favorite is gibberish. Now gibberish uses random words and places and paragraphs. So we can actually pick the number of paragraphs here. At the moment it's got five, one, two, three, four, five. And in here you've got the average word length. So you can actually increase that, etc., and click generate. And it will actually create paragraphs for you. So what I can do is just pick up a paragraph of words, go back into my page, and under main, I'm just going to place the text. Now when I scroll back to the left here, you notice that each of these lines of text are separate. I can turn on what's called word wrap. So when I head up to view, I can click on toggle word wrap, and I can now see where all the lines start and end. So if I want to turn it into one continuous block, I can do so by just removing all the spaces out. Now that I've moved all the text out, I should also place that in a P tag. Now a P tag is for a paragraph and it has a start and a finish. So if I highlight the closed P tag, I can then click on it and then drag it to the end and release it. So therefore this all forms a paragraph tag. So when I save it, now if I want to put a heading in as well, just above the P tag, I'm going to put a H1 tag and then I'm going to put keeping music alive as my heading and I'm going to save and view that. Now I can actually change the size of this information. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this on the left and I'm just going to work on my style sheet now. And therefore you can see the live view. Now what I'm going to do is head down to the bottom and we're going to have a look at the H1 tag. So I'm going to create a style for H1 and let's start by changing the font color to white and saving that. I can also change the size of the font as well. So I can go to font size and as you notice here you can see all the different things like weight, style, variant, display, family and so we're going to be working with the size and I'm just going to put in there say 50 pixels. Now 50 pixels is fairly standard, it's so slightly larger than a H1 tag, but it makes it contrast and stand out a lot more. Another way of doing size is you can actually use rem. So if I go one rem and save this, you'll see it's the same size as the text below. If I want to go to two rem and make it bigger, it'll be twice the size. If I want to go 2.5 rem, and if I wanted to, I could go bigger. So I'm going to use 2.5 rem, and therefore if they change the font size, it'll always be 2.5 times bigger. There is a little mathematical calculation behind it, but that's the quick way of actually understanding it. So it's up to you if you want to use pixels or if you want to use rems. The other thing I can do is actually change the font family, which is the style. So when I go into font and then go family, now depending on what you want to use, you can use you can use a sans serif or an Arial type font, it's up to you. So I'm just going to pick Gilly Sans at the moment and just save that. And you can see that it's like an Arial font, it doesn't have all the little whiskers on it. Or if I wanted to, I could change that. Or I could use a Times New Roman and then have all the little licks underneath the eyes, etc., the feet. So it's up to you what you want to use. I'm just going to go with straight Arial and save that. Now with font families, remember it will start with Arial and then go to Helvetica. If you don't have that, you get Sans Serif. You can actually specify your own fonts if you wanted to, and you could just have Arial. You don't have to have the sets that are suggested. You can actually mix and match for the different fonts that you have on the computer. If you have a look around my YouTube channel, you'll also find other ways of importing fonts into your computer. Or if you wanted to, you can actually link to fonts on the internet and therefore, if the client doesn't have that font on their computer, it will download it when the page is loading and ensure your intended design is displayed on the client's computer. 
Now, the same thing can also occur with the paragraph tag. Now, remember that when we apply a style to the P tag, this will apply to every paragraph tag that is in our website. And once again, we can set the color to say white. We can set the size. And we might go 1.5 rem. And then we can also set the font again. So I might use the same font family and use Arial again. Now the only other thing I want to do in here at the moment is actually turn off the yellow background. So I'm going to go up to my go up to main, highlight it, hold down command and push the forward slash to rem that out and save my page. Now if we want to center our text, there's two ways we can do it. We could center all the H1 tags and therefore whenever we use H1 it will be in the middle. Or we could also but because this is in a container called main, we could just ensure that the text alignment of all objects that are in the main divisional tag are centered. So we can save that and that will center our text. If we want to, we can also apply a little bit of padding. Now padding is different to margin. Margin is outside the box, padding is inside the box. And we can actually apply a little bit of left padding, a little bit of right padding and move that paragraph into the middle. So once again, we can either apply it to the P tag, which means every time we use the paragraph tag, it'll have that padding. Or we could just say things inside the main need to have that padding. So let's give it a try. Let's go padding left and let's set that to say 50 pixels and save that. So you can now see there's 50 pixels on the left and let's do the same to the right. and save that. Now you notice when I save that, it doesn't apply the padding on the right hand side. So we actually have a problem with applying padding to this main tag with the mixed objects that are in it. So to solve that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference the P tags within the main container. So what that's called is subclassing. We can put a subclass and say, well, we wanna look at the main class but also the P tag that's within that. And what we want to do is the P tags that are contained within main, we want to apply padding to the left and the right. So let's save that. And now we can see that it's actually worked correctly. So if this class will only apply to any P tag that is within main. So if you use a P tag somewhere else in any other area or division, this style will not apply. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel and also have a look around for other useful tutorials for web development.